Thank you. Well, I want to believe uh, somebody is controlling the PowerPoint. They are doing this? Okay, excellent. Uh, let me uh, start by acknowledging the presence of all of you. Uh, most especially uh, the director, uh, Royal United Services Institute, the chairman of the, this uh, very important occasion, and distinguished members of uh, this prestigious Royal United S Services Institute here in London. I want to equally uh, acknowledge the members of my delegation whom we came all the way from Nigeria uh, together. We also have our students who are studying in various institutions here in the UK. As directly introduced, I'm here to uh, give you the current uh, situation in our operation in the Nigeria against uh, the Boko Haram uh, terrorist group. Uh, this is essentially a perspective of the Nigerian army. There are so much to be said. In a lecture like this, definitely time will not permit us to say everything. But I'm happy that will be the interactive sessions, issues of special interest to you, and indeed your organizations could be raised and we will respond appropriately. Therefore, I would like to begin by appreciating the Royal United Services Institute for inviting me to this very important land uh, lecture on the Nigerian Army operations. I equally feel humbled and most privileged to be considered as the most appropriate person to share my thoughts and experience on Boko Haram and Nigerian Army's efforts at countering the threat. Globally, the threat posed by terrorism due to violent extremism and other insurgent groups have dominated the world in the last two decades. In response to this challenge, countries around the globe have been preoccupied with fighting terrorism or preventing its spread and minimizing its effects on its citizenry. In this regard, nations have evolved various approaches to tackle the menace with mixed results, depending on the country and nature of the threat. It is important to first draw inferences in combating terrorism from other parts of the world before examining our ongoing efforts against the Boko Haram terrorist group. For example, in Europe, the United Kingdom has had a long history of fighting terrorism from its involvement in the Northern Ireland against the Irish Republican Army in the 70s and 80s. Most recently, terrorists have been very dynamic and innovative in the perpetration of attacks and coordination of their activities. This has clearly demonstrated by the recent lone wolf suicide bomb, truck and knife attacks in Manchester and London in May and June this year. In Asia, Sri Lanka recently emerged from a protracted conflict with the Tamil Tigers that effectively employed terrorism as a feature of their campaign against the government and the people of Sri Lanka. These nations have consequently suffered and understand the damaging effects of terrorism on their national security. In Africa, Algeria and Kenya 
have also been in the throes of terrorists and thus employed different methods to combat the menace with varying degrees of success. While Algeria has largely succeeded in addressing terrorism within its borders, Kenya, on the other hand, is still grappling with addressing the threat posed by the Al-Shabaab Al in Somalia. Nigeria has not been an exception with the rise of the Boko Haram that assumed international notoriety in 2009. According to estimates by the National Emergency Management Agency of Nigeria, the Boko Haram terrorist insurgency has killed over 20,000 people in the countries around the Lake Chad. In addition, over 2 million people are internally displaced. In addition, there are 35 internally displaced persons camps housing about 450,000 people in the Northeast Nigeria. The most effective part, the most affected part of Nigeria is the Borno State, with over 80% of its infrastructure damaged or destroyed. The Nigerian army has been at the forefront of fighting the Boko Haram terrorists with support of the Nigerian Air Force and the Nigerian army, as well as other security agencies. In the course of my submission, I will elaborate on some measures that were crucial to the remarkable successes achieved within a, sh a relatively short period of time since my appointment as Chief of Army Staff in July 2015 to date. The Nigerian Army has been able to contain the activities of the group. This has been through several factors and approaches that have largely been instrumental to the successes achieved in decimating the ranks of the terrorists. This has also resulted in restricting their violent campaign to isolated suicide attacks, use of improvised explosive devices, and hit and run attacks on isolated towns and villages. We now look at the Nigerian Army's approach in countering the Boko Haram terrorists. In countering the Boko Haram, the Nigerian Army has had to adopt a number of approaches that were crucial to changing the tide against the group. These approaches include provision of purposeful leadership, understanding the operating environment, nature and type of conflict, and strategy and tactics employed against the terrorists. The others are logistics support, state of manpower, intelligence, media and information operations, psychological operations, respect for human rights, cooperation with other security agencies and international collaboration. I will briefly examine each of these aspects in addressing the topic under discourse. Provision of purposeful leadership. Perhaps one of the most important factors in the ongoing operations is derived from quality of political and military leadership prevalent at the time. The political leadership demonstrates political will that provides strong purposeful direction and resources that galvanize the nation against the threats, thereby enhancing public perception towards the defeat of the common enemy. The election and subsequent inauguration of the President Commander-in-Chief Muhammadu Buhari in May 2015 and my subsequent appointment as Chief of Army Staff in July of the same year clearly demonstrates this outlook. The military leadership invariably draws inspiration from the political will and gives the military strategic objectives that must be achieved. In the words of Samuel Huntington, and I quote, war is the continuation of policy by other means, with senior military professionals providing security to the state while serving as military advisors to the politicians who practice their expertise in the realm of politics and national strategy, unquote. In addition, the military command needs to be firm to appoint suitable field commanders, assemble the resources, and provide adequate welfare for troops. This is key to achievement of the desired end state. According to uh, Harry S. Truman, and I quote, men make history and not the other way around. 
In periods where there is no leadership, society stands still. Progress occurs when courageous, skillful leaders seize the opportunity to change things for the better, unquote. At the military strategic level, the name of the operation was changed from Operation Zaman Lafia to its present name, Operation Lafia Dole, and the theater was reorganized while other measures were adopted at the operational and tactical levels. This is anchored on provision of strategic guidance that is focused, determined, and inspires subordinate commanders and troops to un undertake assigned tasks. Upon assumption to office as the Chief of Army Staff, I crafted my vision, which is to have a professionally responsive Nigerian Army in the discharge of its constitutional roles. According to John Maxwell, and I quote, good leaders must communicate their vision clearly, creatively, and continually. However, the vision does not come alive until the leader models it, unquote. My approach by realizing this vision was to lead by example, especially by being at the front of the battle in the Northeast. Primarily, this approach was in compliance with Mr. President's directive for the relocation of the military command and control center to Meduguri, the capital of Borno State. The directive I found most inspiring as I virtually moved my office to the theater of operation. Consequently, I have undertaken countless visits to the Northeast, and this afforded me the opportunity of having first-hand knowledge of operational plans, conduct of operations, and understand their challenges. In addition, my presence helped to inspire the troops and fill the pores of the battle. This has been very effective in boosting the morale of troops. Furthermore, deliberate steps were taken to address issues of troops' welfare and undertake on-the-spot assessment of operational directives and proposed changes where necessary. According to Mahatma Gandhi, and I quote, man becomes great exactly in the degree in which he works for the welfare of his fellow men, unquote. This approach has impacted positively on the outcome of the situation in the operation theater. Next is understanding the operating environment. Terrorists usually thrive and operate in difficult environment that offers them some advantage to maneuver and outwit the legitimate forces. In the fight against the Boko Haram terrorists, the operating environment comprising the three most affected states in the Northeast, made up of Adamawa, Borno, and Yobe states, which is quite large and estimated at about 152,000 square kilometers, which is about 16.34% of the total land area of the country. Putting this into perspective, the operational theater is slightly bigger than Portugal and Belgium put together, or roughly 62% the size of the United Kingdom. The terrain of the area is mostly desert, which is very sandy and flood plains that hinder human and vehicular movement. The area is considered as one of the least developed parts of the country, and most of the villages are not accessible. Some of the inhabitants have never felt the impact of the government, as there are no basic social amenities such as roads, water, electricity, hospitals, and schools. This situation provided a suitable breeding ground for the propagation of the Boko Haram terrorist ideology, and thus presented a very difficult environment for the army to operate. To overcome this challenge, we have learned to adapt to the environment, procure the appropriate equipment and platforms suitable for the terrain, and open up some of the inaccessible areas by the construction of roads. Troops have had to improve on situational awareness in order to keep abreast and maintain constant tap on the prevailing threats in the environment. In the fight against the Boko Haram terrorists, deliberate efforts have been made to create active situational awareness among troops. This has been achieved through pre-deployment training, which includes aspects such as counter IED training, urban warfare, and survival skills, 
This has been facilitated through the creation of the Nigerian Army Special Forces School in Buni Yadi to provide two to four weeks pre-deployment training. The climax of the training is the battle inoculation to prepare the troops to have the real feel of the battle area before their induction into the operational theater. The induction of personnel that went through the pre-deployment training in Nigerian Army Special Forces School has had tremendous effect on operational performance in Operation Lafayette Dole. Nature and type of the conflict. The asymmetric nature of the conflict as against conventional warfare presented some unique challenges to fighting terrorism in the Northeast. As an example that, re that readily comes to mind is the situation in Colombia, where since 1964, the Colombian army has been engaged in over 50 years counter-terrorism operations against the FARC guerrillas. The identity of the group is also peculiar, and its actual name is the Jamaatu Ahlus Sunnah Lidda'ati Wal Jihad and they practice an extreme form of violent extremism. They also draw inspiration from other terrorist groups like the Al-Qaeda, the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria, and the Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb. They are popularly known as the Boko Haram, which literally means that Western education is forbidden. The group is very resilient and oppresses a loose structure with Abu Bakr Sheikha as its leader with an Ashura Council and Amirs as independent commanders responsible for their area and men. The group was estimated at about 30 to 35,000 men, including conscripts and foreign fighters, as of July 2015. The terrorists often adopt unconventional tactics. They easily mingle with the population and quickly organize and transform to attack vulnerable targets. They mostly use unconventional tactics like kidnappings, bombings, with the use of high caliber weapons and improvised explosives to commit havoc. The operational posture had to be adapted to suit the peculiar challenge facing our troops. The modus operandi of the group necessitated a change in our strategy, tactics, deployment, equipment holding, and logistics to effect effectively decimate their ranks and curtail their activities. The strategy and tactics employed against the Boko Haram terrorists. In the course of our operation in the Northeast, we have periodically had to implement changes to our strategy in response to the tactics of the Boko Haram terrorists and ensure effectiveness of our operations. Some of the changes undertaken included the creation of a theater command to improve coordination among the formations. Furthermore, the strategic deployment of the tactical headquarters of the three and seven divisions were also affected. The adjustment of boundaries and relocation of some units as well as creation of new eight task force division to improve armed forces capacity in northern Borno Axis. In addition, we had earlier adopted blocking positions, special forces concept and adoption of mobile clearance operations strategies to stifle uh, supplies and clear the Boko Haram terrorists from most of the remote villages and camps they hitherto occupied. Furthermore, new equipment such as improvised explosive device detectors, the Bozena uh, and Amtrak mine clearance vehicles were introduced to improve troops mobility. In addition, we introduced the motorcycle battalion and plans are at an advanced stage to establish the Nigerian Army Aviation Corps. Also, civil military cooperation activities to win hearts and minds were adopted to improve the effectiveness of our troops operations. Since assumption of office, my strategy has been to adopt an aggressive posture with emphasis on constant mobility and clearance operations, which was assisted in changing the tide against the Boko Haram terrorists. Consequently, more than 200 villages have been cleared in our recent exploits, and over 46,000 ab abductees have been freed as at the second quarter of this year. Proactive approach against the terrorist guarantees freedom of action in dealing with threats to national security. This is the essence of my vision, which emphasizes responsiveness in the approach to tackling the situation in the Northeast. Uh, logistics. 
Logistics is absolutely vital to any counterterrorism campaign. According to Sun Tzu, and I quote, the line between disorder and order lies in logistics, unquote. Similarly, Admiral Raymond Sprons of the U.S. Navy once said, and I quote, a sound logistic plan is the foundation upon which a war operation should be based. If the necessary minimum of logistic support cannot be given to the combatant forces involved, the operation may fail or at best be only partially successful, unquote. The provision of equipment, vehicles, spare parts, clothing stores, food, water, ammunition, and petroleum oil and lubricants are required to support the troops to perform optimally in the operation uh, theater. These are done in along with all other uh, morale-boosting uh, actions. Now, state of manpower. The number and quality of training of personnel involved in the fight against terrorism is also an important factor. Counter-terrorism efforts requires a high number of personnel with the right training on counter-terrorism and covers aspects of counter-IED, anti-ambush patrols, cordon and sight and red techniques, amongst others. The state of morale and motivational level of the personnel has addressed, was addressed to ensure commitment and determination on the part of the troops. From July 2015 to date, the number of units increased from 58 to 112, while troops committed also rose from 18,350 to 36,500, representing about 100% uh, increase. In addition, we created the Nigerian Army Special Forces School and expanded training facilities in Nigerian Army School of Infantry to adequately prepare troops for the challenges of the operation. In addition, we embarked on activities such as changing of troops, orientation, regular rotation, timely medical evacuation, both locally and abroad, prompt payment of allowances and granting of passes to improve on troops' morale. The changes made have had a tremendous impact on troops' <coughs> psyche and commitment as demonstrated in their positive disposition to the conduct of operations against the Boko Haram terrorists. Intelligence. Intelligence is absolutely vital to the success of any counter-terrorism operation. In the words of John Kerry, and I quote, war on terror is far less of a military operation and far more of an intelligence gathering, law enforcement operation, unquote. One key factor in operational efficiency is my realization of the intimate link between intelligence and operational cells in the theater of operation. These cells must work seamlessly at all times. In this regard, use of human, technical, and signal intelligence sources need to be combined to form a near accurate picture of the terrorist camps. Their intentions and sources of arms and other information needed to enable operations be conducted against them. Consequently, the use of drones, locals, and wire communication intercepts has assisted the Nigerian army to obtain vital intelligence on the activities of the Boko Haram terrorists. In addition, aerial surveillance through the use of intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance platforms by the Nigerian Air Force, as well as support from the P3 partners made up of the United States of America, Britain and France has also been of immense assistance. For instance, intelligence was obtained from extracts of interrogations of several arrested and surrendered Boko Haram terrorists, as well as the analysis of captured equipment and weapons, which enhanced our operations in the Northeast. In addition, rescued internally displaced persons and escapees also provided valuable information that was effectively used to launch successful operations against the Boko Haram terrorists. <coughs> the effective use of intelligence has been a critical factor in enhancing our operations against the Boko Haram terrorists. Next is media and information operations. The media is the vehicle upon which the terrorists get their messages out to the public and also propagate their dangerous ideology. Terrorists often release public publicity 
about their exploits, thereby instilling fear and trepidation in the minds of the general public. Before my assumption to office, media and information operations were not streamlined. However, since I came on board, I issued an information policy directive for Operation Life Dole, which involves daily update of occurrences and response to queries. Furthermore, we have also employed the use of embedded journalists that accompany the Chief of Army staff on visit to the Northeast to further create awareness of Nigerian, Nigerian Army's activities. The role of the social media has also presented other challenges and provided innovative ways by which information spreads rapidly. We have had to embark on active information operations to carry the media along about our activities and engage regularly to prevent misinformation. We have also undertaken security awareness programs with traditional institutions in the area, among other measures. The combined effort of the print and electronic media and government information apparatus has remained critical to shaping public opinion and defeating the insurgents in the information domain. The initial failure of government to do this was probably responsible for the ineffectiveness of our counterinsurgency efforts against the Boko Haram before this time. Psychological operations. Psychological operations are often employed to influence the psyche and state of mind of the terrorists, their sympathizers, and undecided and passive members of the public. This is often done through spread of counter-narratives against their ideology. They assure the citizens and appeal to the conscience and understanding of the populace. According to Sun Tzu, and I quote, one need not destroy one's enemy. One need only destroy his willingness to engage, unquote. Similarly, Napoleon Bonaparte once said, there are two there are but two powers in the world, the sword and the mind. In the long run, the sword is always beaten by the mind. Unquote. These popular philosophers long ago realized the importance of psychology in oppression. Respect for human rights. Respect for human rights has recently assumed a prominent place in the conduct of Nigerian army operations. To drive this policy, the Department of Civil and Military Affairs has been expanded by the establishment of the Human Rights Desk. In addition, we have developed code of conduct and rules of engagement that were distributed to troops to guide and regulate their conduct in operations. Also, deliberate steps are taken to investigate allegations of human rights abuses and sanctions applied whenever they occur. Furthermore, some international non-governmental organizations, like the International Committee of the Red Cross, are granted access to our detention facilities to evaluate our treatment of detainees, which is often run in accordance with internationally acceptable laid down rules and regulations and procedures. These measures have assisted in boosting the confidence and positive attitude of the citizens towards Nigerian Army counter-terrorism efforts and our image in the international community. Humanitarian aspects. Humanitarian aspects of the operation are undertaken to reduce the suffering of the victims, provide for their immediate needs, and restore their dignity. We have had to embark on feeding of IDP sometimes from the resources meant for troops and running of educational programs in the IDP camps. We have also provided the enabling environment for 69 international humanitarian and non-governmental organizations and equally provided escorts for their activities in unstable, inaccessible areas. All these initiatives were undertaken to win the hearts and minds of the inhabitants of the area and win support for our counter-terrorism efforts globally. Cooperation with other security agencies. It has been proven that no single agency can effectively <coughs> tackle threats to national security on its own. It is crucial that synergy is developed with other security agencies to maximize the strengths and mitigate the, weakness, the weaknesses. In the Northeast, 
Other security agencies have played prominent roles in support of the Nigerian Army. The Nigerian Air Force, for instance, has featured prominently by providing close air support, air interdiction, aerial surveillance, casualty evacuation, airlift of logistics, resupply, among others. The Nigerian Navy also has some of its personnel from the special boat services deployed with the Armed Forces Special Forces. It also recently operationalized its fourth operation base in Baga with the deployment of some patrol boats and personnel for conduct of operation for the operations around the Lake Chad uh, waters. We equally have the Nigeria Police, the Department of State Services, and a host of other uh, agencies. Now, international collaboration. In the era of globalization, assisted by rapid de development of information and communication technology, the terrorists have been able to maintain international clout through collaboration with their cohorts in other parts of the globe. Movement of information and funds to sustain their operations cannot be easily monitored and controlled. International collaboration is thus needed to frustrate communications and track suspicious financial transactions. The Nigerian government, through efforts like the P3 partners, which I mentioned earlier, the multinational joint task force comprising Benin, Republic of Chad, Cameroon, Niger, and of course Nigeria, community of Sahel, Saharan states, censored for short, and Islamic coalition against terrorism has been explored to fight the Boko Haram terrorists and address the threat from other groups across the African continent and beyond. This has mainly been achieved through the conduct of joint operations around the Lake Chad waters under the Multinational Joint Task Force, sharing of intelligence, liaison and sharing of experiences as well as joint training and logistics and diplomatic support amongst others. Now briefly on the current situation. It is expedient that in a forum of this nature, I brief on the current situation in our operation against the Boko Haram terrorists. Since July 2015, considerable progress had been made from our deployment in just four local government areas in Borno State to 27 local governments, parts of Adamawa and Yobe States. Also, statistics from July 2015 to date shows that 3,000 133 terrorists were killed, 5,475 arrested, and 32 bomb-making facilities destroyed in our operations against the Boko Haram terrorists. Similarly, 81 improvised explosive device devices were successfully detonated, while 689 ambushes were successfully mounted against the terrorists. Also, 1,155 arms of various types and 85,349 rounds of ammunition of different calibers were recovered. In addition, Boko Haram terrorism numbers has been reduced to an estimated 1,500 from the initial estimates of over 35,000, which I mentioned earlier. Also, a total of 100,852 persons were rescued from the terrorists. Unfortunately, in the corresponding period, 269 troops were killed in action, 524 wounded in action, and 12 are still missing in action. Uh, this is just from 2015 uh, to date. I have not taken those uh, before 20, uh, maybe before July 2015. Permit me at this junction to talk on stabilization operations. The emphasis that significant pro pro uh, progress has been achieved in our operations against the Boko Haram terrorists are quite obvious. Consequently, we have gradually moved from conduct of major operations to small-scale mop-up and clearance operations. Invariably, operational tempo has reduced as we have now entered the stabilization phase. In this phase, several measures are being adopted to achieve success. These measures include transition from static to mobile operations with activation of highly mobile brigades, 
phase drawdown of troops in the operation with the first and second phases of troops already withdrawn from the theater. Continuous plan for rotation of troops that have overstayed with fresh troops to prevent battle fatigue. Deployment of civil police and other security agencies to take over areas liberated and to be vacated by troops. Stepping up civil military cooperation activities such as educational support at the IDP camps and facilitating the establishment of civil administration in the liberated local government areas. Uh, this to large extent, most of them have been achieved. I have now in conclusion, I have in the last few minutes presented an overview of contemporary approaches to fighting terrorism from the Nigerian Army perspective and my practical experience as Chief of Army Staff. In the course of my submission, I discuss the key approaches that have been crucial to, the, to decimating the Boko Haram uh, terrorists, which has been called the technical defeat of the Boko Haram terrorists. I know this issue will be raised in the course of discussion, the terrorism session. In Nigeria and countries around the Lake Chad, some of the approaches include political and military leadership, understanding the operating environment and international collaboration, among others. I have also presented the numerous successes recorded against the Boko Haram terrorists. This is my sincere conviction and hope that useful lessons have been drawn from my experiences and it will also serve as a module for counterterrorism operations in Africa and indeed globally. Once more, it is my singular honor and privilege to have been part of uh, this very important uh, organization, the Royal United Services Institute. I want to use this opportunity to once more thank the organizers for inviting me to deliver this very important uh, talk. Thank you and God bless.